With the 40 pound box of chicken, I'm sharing it with my sister. So she has 10 pounds of it and I just have 30 pounds of it. So the last time we was at Cash and Carry, oh, it's a chef store now. We got a 40 pound box of boneless, skinless chicken breast. It was under $50, so about $1.25 a pound. It's raw, it was frozen. We've let it thaw a bit in a styrofoam container with this in it and some ice packs on top. It takes a while to thaw out that way, but it's looking good. This is how it comes and it's just a giant lump. Sometimes there's like bags within the bag. Sometimes it's a giant lump. This one looks like it's packaged better than the ones we've done in the past. And there's still some ice lingering, well, quite a bit of ice, and this is still fairly solid. But I'm gonna see if I can break this up. I'm sharing this with my sister, so she's taking 10 pounds and we're gonna do 30 pounds. My plan for ours is, I think we're just going to cook it very plain. We'll get this split up and we'll come back when we figure out which pans we're gonna put it on. I cut the top of this bag open and was actually kind of surprised to see that there's bags inside the bags. So let's find out how much it weighs. Nine pounds, seven ounces. So almost a 10 pound bag. That is nice. Just barely over 10 pounds. So with the bag, that would be 10 pounds, two ounces. So this would be a 10 pound bag of chicken and we'll probably cook these tomorrow because this is still pretty solid so it could still go in the refrigerator for another day. With the 40 pound box of chicken, I'm sharing it with my sister. So she has 10 pounds of it and I just have 30 pounds of it. So I'm going to cook mine just extremely plain. I'll probably make it a little bit thinner if necessary to get them more even. And I'm just going to put them on these baking sheets and put them in the oven. I'm not planning on seasoning them or anything, just cooking them. And I'm going to cook them until they're just barely cooked well enough. And then I'll take them out, let them cool, and then cut them up into the pieces that I want for freeze drying. Then we'll get them pre-frozen and then get them in the freeze dryer. So I'll be putting a remote thermometer in the chicken and watch it to make sure that it gets up to the temperature I want. And as pretty much all cooks know, um, you don't have to get to 165 degrees. It's, I'm sure you know, so this is from the USDA food safety inspection. It's a time versus temperature issue. It's not a time or it's not a pure temperature. They always talk about 165 degrees. Well, 165 degrees is for zero seconds. So all you have to do is hit that 165. But for chicken and turkey, uh, assuming 12% fat, you could go as low as 136 degrees. You just need 82 minutes. But as soon as you start getting higher temperatures, the time drops rapidly. At 150, all you need to do is hold that for five minutes and you're good. So I'm going to try to uh, get it to about 150 and hold that. So see if I can get it to not be as overcooked as I usually do. I usually overcook meats a lot because I like my stuff to be very well done. Anyway, we'll get these sliced up. Uh, if they need any slicing, I'll remove as much fat as I can and we'll get them onto the baking sheets. Try to shave off any extra fat because we don't need that. I'm going to take some of these really thick pieces and slice them down, two or three slices. So nice slices, fairly thick, but that'll be good enough for baking. And then I'll be able to uh, cut them up into whatever shape I want for freeze drying, because this is still pretty big. So as soon as I get them all loaded onto the baking sheets, I'll get those into the oven and cook them until they're just barely done enough. I've got the chicken cut up into pieces and on the pans. 
I'm going to just cover them loosely with foil and I've got the thermometer probe into there so I can trap that and I'm just going to not going to worry about tucking it tightly around all the ends I'm just going to get the two sides so that it'll be covered relatively loosely and then those can go into the oven I've got two pans of them for the 10 pounds so that'll go in the oven and bring them out when they're done so when it was 145 I turned off the oven started a timer for 14 minutes and then it continued to cook and made it up to 100 and uh, actually it's made it all the way to 162 now but at least it's not powering past that all right we're at about 165 there so it's still more than I really want to do so I need to get better at it at stopping a little earlier that lost a lot of of the liquid out of it so this still might not be the best way to cook it but it's going to be very plain very simple I'll be able to cut this up and use it for pretty much anything and this is just well half of the first 10 pounds so I'll let that cool a little bit all right so between the two that was 10 pounds I'm still thinking that for chicken Costco rotisserie chicken is the best deal unless you need it a specific uh, spiciness or for some dish I'll just go with Costco rotisserie chicken as I said I'll let that cool for a while and then I'll start cutting them up into littler pieces for freeze drying and you could certainly freeze dry them as this size in fact maybe I will some of them because there's nothing wrong with that either because you could cut it up later also so they could be freeze dried just like this in chunks I can always change them later that would be simple well we'll let those cool for a while I think I will save the broth and maybe make some rice with it that's going to represent a pretty significant weight loss I'm guessing that it was maybe a brined chicken or a seasoned chicken because it doesn't taste that plain these have had a chance to cool down a while I've decided I'm going to just leave them this same size and shape and freeze them this size then I can cut them up later um, maybe the bad plan I don't know but I'm going to go ahead and just leave them big for now I'm just going to transfer them to a cookie sheet or a baking sheet with a sill pad on it and freeze them that way and then I'll be saving this broth for cooking rice uh, to make some nice rice flavored chicken nope chicken flavored rice <laughs> okay, this part will I'll save for cooking rice this will go into the freezer for pre-freezing and again they're pretty big pretty thick but I'm not going to worry about that we'll get these done I've got three batches of these to cook and then we'll freeze dry them I might cut some of the batches down into smaller pieces I might leave them all big I don't know yet so uh, when next we see them we'll be putting them on freeze dryer trays we'll see what size they are see you in a minute I thought it would be a good idea to address this here because it comes up every time why not just put the stuff directly on the freeze dryer trays for pre-freezing well the freeze dryer trays are already in the freeze dryer doing another batch and sometimes we have 15 even 20 batches worth in the freezer waiting we don't have that many trays we wouldn't have space for that many trays and it would be prohibitively expensive to buy that many trays so we just pre-freeze things and then transfer them to ziplocs to await their turn in the freeze dryer but if you don't get that far ahead you certainly can just put everything directly onto the freeze dryer trays and then put it in the freeze dryer so now it's a few days later after I cooked the chicken uh, I ended up cooking it in three different batches 10 pounds at a time 10 pounds before it's cooked because of course it loses some weight while it's being cooked uh, the second two batches I cut them even thinner and we're going to start with one of those batches and I'm going to combine all three batches for video so it'll be quicker 
So we'll get that chicken loaded onto trays and get them weighed and in the freeze dryer. The freeze dryer has been pre-cooling for a couple hours now, so it's very cold. Uh, so let's get them on there. Tray one, and since I have the weights of the tray itself, I'm going to go ahead and put it here while I load the chicken on it. So I'm using one of the corrugated plastic pieces to keep the chicken insulated from the table a bit. And so these are the other pieces that I did. You can see, cut them quite thin. And they're pretty big, so I don't know how they're going to fit on the trays. Uh, they're certainly not going to fit nicely on the trays. Not evenly, because I just... I didn't cut them up into cubes or anything. I decided just to leave everything big. And I might go ahead and do two layers thick because they are thin. It will take longer to freeze dry with two layers, but it'll still take less than running two full batches. Let's see how much that weighs with a double layer on there. Oh, 19. So that's more than two and a half pounds. Um, on this tray, I'd only have to get to 1889 to have two and a half pounds. So this has about 100 grams more than two and a half pounds. But the water load isn't going to be that big because it's cooked. It's already lost a decent amount of water in it. I'm going to go ahead and put a thermometer just between two of the pieces. Let's see. Whoops. Okay, that'll work. Tray two. Play the meat Tetris game. I'm trying to look for the thinnest pieces so that I don't have it getting too heavy. Because I want it to dry in a reasonable amount of time. That looks pretty good. I'm going to use 1762. And I'll add a thermometer in that one also. And I don't have to have, you don't have to have thermometers at all. And for my purposes, I don't have to have a thermometer on every tray. I use it mostly for reheating to make sure that I've got the food warm enough before I take it out so it doesn't get condensation. Eighteen hundred even and then the rest of these will go back in the freezer for later So this is a little over nine and a half pounds and now it's ready to go into the freeze dryer So let's get it loaded. So now we're gonna get those in there and it's all fogged because I'd opened it real quick and then forgot or Realized I hadn't turned the camera on so closed it up But it instantly gets condensation on that piece inside which just goes to show you This is why I have the thermometers in there Otherwise, you wouldn't know how much condensation you're going to get when you open it when the food's still cold and there's nothing to tell you the temperature of the food. So I put the thermometers in there to tell me the temperature of the food. So when it's finished and I wasn't here when it actually finished and I don't know how long ago it finished, I won't know how cold it is. But this way I can look at my thermometers and go, well, they're 40 below. If I open it, I'm going to get all that condensation on the food, which I don't want. So I'm going to put tray one in the second position instead of the top like normal because tray one is a couple of hundred grams or a hundred some grams heavier than any of the other trays. So I want it in a place that's going to be a little bit warmer. I'm looking for a ring all the way around to make sure I've got a seal. It looks good. It looks like I have a ring all the way around there so that it's nicely sealed and I won't have air going in there as it starts to freeze or continues freezing and then when the vacuum pump starts for the freeze drying. So this should be done in about two days. So don't go away. Be back in just a second. I was almost late. It's down to two and a half minutes. So the heaters have been off for 12 and a half minutes. So the temperature will have already started to drop a little bit. But I did check them about an hour ago and the temperature still wasn't very high on the top rack and the bottom one's a little bit low also. The middle two were about 110, 120 degrees which is what I would expect them to be a minimum because it's set for 125 but the top one was only about 75 degrees 
and it's still only about 75 degrees. So if I assume that it heated up a little bit more during those uh, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe it made it to 80. It's not done. I wouldn't trust it to be done if it just barely made it to there. It didn't have a chance to hold it up that higher temperature for any length of time. Um, I'm not going to take them out yet. I'm not even going to worry about the dry check, but I am going to switch the trays uh, to move the outside ones to the inside for a while. And I probably won't bother taking it out until tomorrow morning because I don't want to stay up that late today. And this is one of the bad things about the sucky timing I do. Uh, I often don't think about when it's going to need to come out, and so I put them in when I've got time. And I should look a little bit about when it's going to need to come out. We'll bypass the last few seconds. Uh, we'll open the drain valve. Okay. And we'll see what we've got. So tray one is down at the second position right now. And it isn't that hot. Oh, that's icy cold right there. Yeah, they're not done. And I'm not terribly surprised because remember I stacked these two layers high and so I knew that they would take some extra time and it's only been 32 and a half hours. Um, it's not likely to have been done. Okay, so I'm not even going to bother taking the weights of them for a dry check because there's no chance that they can be dry yet. I'm going to go ahead and look at this other one. I'm going to leave it in the same position because this is a little bit less on the tray and it's thinner than this one. So this one needs more warmth, more heat. I'll go ahead and switch these two. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get that closed back up and just get it restarted. It needs more time. And I would have thought so just from the thermometers alone. So the machine thinks it was about done. And it may be within four or five hours of done, but it wasn't done. And 32 and a half hours for the way I have it piled on the trays isn't going to be enough. So we'll get them restarted. I'll get the drain valve closed. We'll restart using more dry time. It's reminding me to close the drain valve. Did it. Continue. And then it says it still needs a bunch of time to cool the pump. I don't let the pump get that hot. So I'm going to bypass that and just get it going. And then I'll bump up the final dry time, additional dry time. I've added six additional hours of final dry time and then I'll still have to rewarm it in the morning. And I could just give it enough time so that it still simply keeps going until I'm ready to check it. But that would mean it'll be drying, it'll be warming the trays to dry it, perhaps unnecessarily, because I think five hours is enough to finish it. And so I could let it rest or the vacuum pump go off and the heaters go off, because those use more power than just this cooling unit. The cooling unit's like 350, I think, uh, 330, 350 watts, where everything combined is like 1,350 watts. So by just running the cooling when I don't think it needs dried, I'll save a little money on that. Okay, so we'll come back and check it in the morning. The machine has already stopped, and I don't know exactly how long ago it stopped. And this is exactly the purpose that I put the thermometers in there for. If I didn't know how long ago it stopped and I don't know the temperature of the food and I take it out and it's ice cold or ridiculously cold, it could be 40 below for all I know, it will condense moisture from the air onto the trays and food almost instantly. Well that kind of defeats the purpose of drying it. But I have the thermometers in there and I can tell from those thermometers that it hasn't cooled much, so it must not have stopped very long ago. Oh yeah, I'm back. It's the next day. I've already rewarmed it and then got sidetracked and didn't get back down in time and forgot to set a timer for it. Well, actually I did set a timer uh, to tell me 
but then I was busy, didn't hear the timer, and it was still beeping when I came back, so I don't know how long it had been uh, going off. Anyway, we're going to take them out, weigh them, put them back in for the dry check. I don't have to bypass any time because it's already done. So next, open the drain valve. Okay, starting with tray one. And it's still warm. Uh, the thermometer says 110 degrees and that would be up in the food. The tray is already down to, I'm going to guess, just above body temperature. So it's at 1137 and it's dropping down to 6. So I'm going to put 1137 but a little minus sign to, so I'll know that it's just about to go to the next number down. Tray 2 and this one does have less stuff on it, less food. Okay. It's 1047, so I'm just wondering if I should at least flip things over. That's cool right there, but it has been cooling for a while now. So we'll put that back up. Okay. So I had tray 2 on the top shelf because it has a little bit less food in it than the number 1 tray. I'm going to go ahead and leave it that way. Okay, tray three, and it's 1047. So currently that's exactly the same as the uh, tray two. Okay, and tray four. And tray three is cool to the touch, and that's 1082. This tray is still warm, and I'm going to go ahead and put this one down here this time and I'll move tray three up one and that one is definitely cool to the touch it's not cool enough that I would get condensation uh, in this room because it's cool in this room too but it is cool I'd given it extra hours overnight so the extra time ran out and it finished and then I restarted it to warm it this morning now I've got the weights put it back in I'll run it for another two hours or three hours and then we'll come back and check it again to see if it lost any weight. Some of the pieces of chicken, that first set that I cut, I left them a little thicker. They may take a little while longer to dry. So I've got the drain valve closed. I'm going to give it more dry time. And when I do this, it's going to tell me how long it was off because it gives a one hour countdown. So more dry time. Close the drain valve. Continue. Okay, so it had only been off for 13 minutes right now, so I didn't miss it by very much. Okay, and then restart. And I'm going to put three hours on it because I can skip past it if I need to. As you saw, I gave it three extra hours. I'll come back in two to three hours whenever I make it back here and check it. If it doesn't lose any weight that means it's already dry now and I can take the time from before I started this extra time and use that as my how long did it take to dry time so I'll be right back don't go away it's about two and a half hours later so we're gonna take them out see if they lost any weight during that two and a half hours if they didn't they were finished drying in about 40 and a half hours if I take away all the time that it was sitting waiting for me uh, and not drying. So that would be, I think, the most accurate way to gauge that, except for, of course, actually being here and taking it out on time and then knowing. But that's unlikely to happen, so I'll use my best estimates. I'm going to bypass the rest of that time with the down arrow. Then I'll open the drain valve. Tray one, and that tray is currently toasty warm. It's about 130 degrees, and it has lost weight. So it's gone down four grams. So it's gonna go back in for more time. So get that back in. So tray two, and tray one was the heaviest. So it had thicker pieces. Tray two, it's only down by one, but since tray one's got to go back in, I'll go ahead and put that back in. Tray three, and it's also down by one, so it probably would have been finished. 
but again tray one's got to go in I might as well put the others in that one had no change so that's literally the only one with zero change I'm gonna put that back in and I'm gonna go ahead and give it another two hours to make sure so we'll come back in another couple hours and check it again well it's been just about two hours again about an hour 55 we'll get them out of there check them to see if they lost any weight so last time tray one had lost about four grams and tray one is toasty keeps going back up to the next number so I'm going to count it as no change tray two and no change on that one tray three and move that over a little bit and no change on it and finally tray four and also no change so I'm going to shut it off with no defrost and I'll get these moved over and then we'll come back and get the time so it's showing about 55 hours but the actual time that it was freeze drying was about 43 hours uh, the rest of the time the rest of the 12 hours it was overnight waiting for me to get around to taking care of it so I'm going to put 43 hours for the time that it took to dry this one so it took about 32.14 kilowatt hours for that batch and we'll get it reset for the next batch and the three and a half watts that it'll show here that's what the electronics of the harvest right is using on my older one just sitting and waiting so our batch of just over nine and a half pounds of chicken is dry now now we'll get the thermometers removed and get the final weights and then calculate out what it is per pound now uh, in comparison to what it was when it was still wet so 11.25 Okay, tray two, 1038. This batch started at 9.56 pounds. It lost 3,053 grams of water and now weighs 1,282 grams. So if I divide the 1282 by the original weight in pounds it gives me each pound is the equivalent of 134 grams of the dry chicken so I'm going to try to put it in 10 bags with about 134 grams in each and I really don't know which bag that's going to take and a part of it will probably depend on how big the slices are because some of these are awfully big and some of them are smaller so I have some two quart bags and one quart bags and I've got the labels so I'm going to just put a paper towel on top of here and zero it out and then see what it looks like if I stack 134 grams of chicken on there and it probably again depends on which pieces some of them are awfully big I'm looking for some of the bigger piece ones Okay, that's too much so I'm after a hundred and thirty four oh that's pretty close so I want to get as close to 134 as possible that's pretty close so that's just over a pounds worth now will that fit in one of the quart bags I think it will I'm gonna try it we'll see if that'll fit uh, the batch number here what it is when it went into the freeze dryer and then I've got places for the weights but first I'll see if that will fit in there this is close enough to one pound that I can just call it one pound but now let's see if it'll fit in this bag I just do not know let's check that out that will close so made a little bit of a mess but not too bad I'll add on here that the pre weight was one pound and that it needs approximately 320 grams of water that should tell me everything I need to know about that one so I'll do each one of them this way and see how it works out and I'll try not to make too much of a mess got to remember to hold the bag over a tray when I'm trying to stuff the pieces in there 
That's really close. Now, I don't know if this bag is big enough though, because those pieces are too, too big. So I'm going to go ahead and use the two quart bag for that one. That way I don't have to break any of the pieces up. And I need to remember to put those in over one of these trays. So that way I don't have to damage them. They fit in there nicely. I'll get some bagged. We'll be back. We've got the last of them weighed out into piles. And of course I should have uh, nine bags with a one pound in and then one bag with a little over a half pound. And I want all the pieces to be as big as possible for future use because I don't know what I'm going to use it for in the future. So this one can be just a little over a half pound. Kind of clean this off and be right back. All the chicken is bagged in nine one quart bags and one two quart bag. I used the one two quart bag because some of the pieces were pretty big and I didn't want to break it up. Otherwise it all would have fit into one quart bags. Now I'll add the 300 cc oxygen absorbers and we'll get them closed up and then heat sealed. Kind of drop it alongside or tuck it down the side so it doesn't end up in the seal. And I like to move the bag over a little bit so I don't lose my place and forget one. Or double up on one. But it'd be far worse to forget one than to double up on one. Okay, now we get them zippered closed. Next, we'll get them all heat sealed. I want to seal them as high up on the bag as I can to leave myself room in case of, uh, well, in case the seal is bad or I want to open it, use some. I'm going to do the first one twice. Anyway, it just gives me more room to do more seals if I need to. So the seal is nice and high and there's room for two or three more tries before I get to the zipper. One of the things that we like to do is add a gross weight to each bag. So that's what I'm going to do now is just write on it what the bag weighs right now the way it sets. That way if the bag is bad or the bag, get, or the bag gets damaged and starts letting moisture in there, I'll be able to tell by putting it on the scale, finding out if it weighs more. So the chicken is ready to go into the storage area and it's going to go into the second bin behind here. So seven back. This little piece of tape tells me that I still have space for probably a whole batch back there. So I'll go ahead and get it out. And I do. That's the same one we put the last bin or last batch into, batch 601. There's plenty of room for batch 602 in there. So we'll get that in there and get it back on the shelf and get the database updated so we know where to find it again when we want it. With those in there, those will go back onto the shelf and it looks like there's probably room for one more batch in there, which means you can easily get more than 30 pounds of wet weight of food in one of these little 12 gallon bins. 12 gallon bins. <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was a 12 gallon storage bin. Anyway, um, that'll go back on there and I'll leave the little tab of tape on there for now because then I'll know that there's room for probably one more batch there. And if not, there's room for a couple of bags on this one so I could get them all on this area. That's it for this batch. Uh, as soon as the machine is defrosted, we'll get the next batch in there or tomorrow morning uh, because I'll probably be too lazy to start it today but it'll be another batch of chicken I think I've got at least one batch of chicken maybe two definitely one and so I probably well I'll combine it and make it short again all right thanks for watching this is batch 603 uh, the second half of that chicken uh, from 602 it's ready to take out weigh and put back in for the dry check so just a quick update 
not going to bother showing all this, of course. One of the main two reasons why I put the thermometers in the food. Last night, it said it was only an hour or two away from being done. And I could see the thermometers in there, and there was still a thermometer in there that said that it was still only 30 degrees. It was the top thermometer in here. It said it was 30 degrees. One of the others said 50, the others said like 100. Well, if there's a tray in there where the food is 30 degrees, I know it's not going to be done in two hours. So I added six more hours last night so that it would run during the night and get more dry before now. Anyway, that's the main reasons I have the thermometers. You don't have to have thermometers in the food or on the trays, but it gives me some information that you don't get if you don't have the thermometers. It can come in handy, especially if you don't pay enough attention to the machine that finishes and gets cold. Um, yeah, there's too many times that it would be too cold to take out, and I wouldn't know that. Two and a half hours later, I'm going to take them back out, check them to see if they're dry, or to see if they were dry two and a half hours ago. That's all I'm checking for is, were they dry before I added time? If they lost weight, then they weren't dry, and I'll put it in again until they don't lose weight. So, going to call that good, stop the machine with no defrost. This started out as 9.53 pounds, so just over nine and a half pounds. We'll check the weights now. This batch of chicken was almost identical to the last batch. As far as the total weights, the last batch was 9.56 pounds before it was dried. This time it was 9.53 before it was dried. And the weight per pound on this one is only about four grams difference after it was dried this time. I've got the chicken bagged in 10 one quart bags. I've got one pound in nine of the bags and about a half pound in the 10th bag. And when I say a pound, I'm talking about the wet weight. Now they only weigh about 138 grams. So it works out with this 40 pound box of raw chicken that after it's dried, it works out to about 25 pounds of cooked chicken. Well, 25 pounds for basically $50 is about $2 a pound. Costco rotisserie chicken works out to about $2 a pound and has far less work. So unless I want these slabs or some other kinds of things like this, I'm better off, I think, getting Costco rotisserie chickens, stripping the meat off, freeze drying it. And then I also have the bones, which I could roast and then cook down and make a nice broth. Uh, I really like chicken flavored rice. This wasn't a terrible price, but it's not a great price. If I could, if the prices go down at some point and I could get already cooked cube chicken for uh, two and a half or three dollars a pound, that would be worth it. This, you gotta wonder if it's the right thing because it's not really a less expensive way to get uh, pounds of chicken. If this is what you want, then it works perfectly. These bags are also going into seven back, so the one behind this. And if there's not enough room, I see that there's room for two or three bags at least in this front one. So we'll put them in there, write them down on the sheet, and get them in the database so we'll know where to find them later. We'll see how much of it fits. I don't think I can get that last one in there though, because it's going to be too high. So I'm going to have nine of them go into this bin, and I'll have one in the other bin. So that's it for this batch, and that's it for the, the, that batch of chicken. Um, again, I don't think it's the best way to go if you're just after chicken. If I wanted to make white bean chicken chili, that might have been a good way to go, or a bunch of other recipes. But just to get chicken, cooked chicken on the shelf, I think maybe the Costco rotisserie chicken is a better deal. You'll have to do the math yourself and figure out which way works best for you. And look for sales, of course. As soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted, we'll get on to the next batch.
We've got these. Uh, we've got all the cook. Ah, the chicken. I've got the cook. The chicken. Say the word chicken. Okay. We've got. Well, I don't know how much it weighs. So I'll tell you in a minute. Recording. What was that? Oh. <laughs> I thought I did something to the camera, made a sound I'd never heard. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> uh.